What's up, guys? Welcome back to C Games for SLI4. We got TNC going up against Fnatic in one of the two semifinals. Winner goes to finals, loser is out. So it should be good, though. Game one was won pretty handily by TNC, ending the game with a 50-ish K lead. Yeah, it was a... Uh, it was quite substantial there for TNC. Having a Timbersaw last pick up against a whole bunch of physical right clickers, very little magic damage, seems like it should be a pretty good position there for TNC. But Fnatic, we've seen play much better than what we saw in game one. So I would expect a game three, honestly. Let's hope for a game three because no one likes to watch two, two, two stomps in a row. That's just not fun for anyone. I'm Mike Loris, going to be your caster for this game. Quick look at the bands. We have Clockwork and Bane actually going to be taken out. TNC, uh, well, just getting done destroying with Bane, then immediately going to take it out. Clockwork also did quite a bit of work here from the TNC side. As far as those base heroes are concerned, like, you're not going to ban out a Timbersaw. The only reason Timbersaw did well is because he was matched up very well up against what Fnatic had. So uh, they're going to actually go for something a little bit different, which is what we saw in the earlier set of the day. Bounty Hunter first pick. I don't think this hero was banned in the last game. Definitely wasn't picked, but Bounty Hunter does give you remaining. some some uh, numerous options as to how you're going to approach your cores. We have seen Bounty Hunter Tinker be absolutely obnoxious, so there is that to consider. But overall, when you're picking up Bounty Hunter, you pick up a Shadow Fiend or a DK or really any of these heroes that do well versus uh, uh, as far as objective taking is concerned. And you could really start snowballing very heavily out of control. You can play the slower game as well, get a Bounty Hunter and a Medusa. You do need very heavy hitting side lane heroes if you're going to do something like that. But uh, for sure, you do have a lot of options there remaining. with a Bounty Hunter as the first pick. I'm not a huge fan of it as the first pick. I, I do feel Five like you could usually pick him up remaining. a little bit later. But hey, to each his own. And for sure, the hero is powerful enough, if you set him up well enough in the draft, to be well worth that first pick. Fnatic are going to go for a pretty, uh, not completely ordinary, but still very common opening of their own. And the Ogre Magi, Shadow Shaman, and TNC second pick Tinker. I have not seen a second pick Tinker in years, man. Maybe ever? Like, usually the hero, you, you if you're going to pick him up, if you really want to pick him up, you have to do it early. Because with the Bounty Hunter especially, teams have been banning out Tinker when they see Bounty Hunter already. So you got to do it like this if you want to do this. The problem is, is that now Fnatic will just pick up good anti-tinker heroes. Your Storm Spirits of the world, your, uh, well, I mean, a lot of four positions are out, but your Bat Rider. So TNC almost seems like they absolutely have to make those bans. Otherwise, they're just going to have their tinker just dumpstered. Now, what's good here for the tinker is that he's with the Bounty Hunter. So you can do some really obnoxious things there with the vision you get, as well as just killing people in lane. It's That's always pretty powerful. And the fact that Fnatic are most likely showing off their two supports already. Shadow Shaman and Ogre Magi are good at killing off Tinker early on, but when you're pushing towards more the mid-late stages of the game, they don't have nearly as much game as, say, uh, Ogre Magi was a clockwork instead. Obviously, he's banned out, not going to happen, but yes, that would have otherwise screwed over the Tinker. Or uh, an Earth Spirit, another one of these heroes that can really do well. Ten Shadow Shamans remaining. typically don't get mobility items enough to catch up to a Tinker. So if uh, if the Shadow Shaman remaining. was a Vengeful Spirit, for example, like Fnatic will be such in a better position to deal with this. Instead, they have two really clunky, kind of immobile heroes. Now these heroes can do really, really well in the early stages. So if they're able to sit on the Tinker and kind of kill him off, pressure his farm a couple times, then Fnatic with the... Uh, pushing power of the Shaman's wards, as well as I would imagine a more aggressive style moving forward with the Bloodlust, they can definitely put the screws to TNC early on. But if they miss that window, they're going to be in a lot of trouble because usually uh, you want to have a couple of supports, a couple of cores, all being able to answer a Tinker. Otherwise, you're in a little bit of trouble. So Fnatic, remaining. not going to have Quop or Spectre. Puck is still in. Puck is a decent one as far as catching up to a Tinker. is pretty safe for Fnatic. Would also like to see what combos they have with this Ogre Magi, because you don't pick up an Ogre Magi and then just be happy with him. He's not that type of hero. You really do want to have some sort of synergy with the Bloodlust, or at least set up some combos. They're going to go for an Abaddon for Fnatic. Interesting. Now, Abaddon's really good up against the Bounty Hunter. He's, like, impossible to gank, because <laughs> if you're a Bounty Hunter trying to gank with Abaddon, good freaking luck, man. And he is able to take out those tracks very easily with the Aphotic Shield. The downside, though, is that Abaddon doesn't have much game, uh, really any game at all, 
versus a tinker. There is no period in the game where it's like, all right, I'm a bad and I'm going up against tinker. Let's do it. No, it just doesn't happen like that. He's not that mobile. He usually doesn't get any like sort of catch items or he has no catch style. And tinker is just going to have every advantage over a bad. You will be able to set up even more so though for this attack speed style, killing off those objectives and then trying to apply pressure with the other two cores. Is this safer? Then going for someone like a Bat Rider, I'm not entirely sure, or a Puck, but uh, Fnatic are trying really hard to answer this Bounty Hunter. I do think they are lacking answers for this Tinker, though. If they don't pick up any good answers mobility-wise, they'll have to just sit on him 100% on lane. If they, again, fail that, then they're in a lot of trouble. TNC still need their secondary support as well. Who's still in the pool? Shadow Shaman is picked, Rubik, Disruptor. They can go for... I wasn't going to say Witch Doctor, I was going to say an AA for a little more global power, but Witch Doctor is perfectly fine as well. A semi-defensive hero to maybe just chill nearby the Tinker, just to give him that extra cover. Because again, if you're Shadow Shaman, if you're Ogre Magi, and if you're charging in towards a Tinker, uh, first of all, Ogre Magi is melee, so he's always going to get uh, kind of hit with that cask, and Shadow Shaman as well. Really doesn't want to start channeling that shackle when there's a cast bouncing through. Fnatic will grab the Storm Spirit, so I would imagine there's going to be a lot of action over in mid. For Fnatic, this is probably the best hero period as far as killing off tinkers are concerned. So this is something that uh, TNC can still answer. Ten seconds I mean, the answers remaining. to Storm Spirit generally massive amounts of disables or an anti-mage. That's a possibility for TNC, though I'm not really sure if that's the safest way to go. A bunch of disables is probably a better way to start. They only really do have one in the Witch Doctor. They, I think, may be able to get away with a Faceless Void here. You have a Witch Doctor and a Tinker. They may be a little bit low on damage if they decide to go for, for that route, however. So they definitely do want to have a little bit more power in these, uh, in these earlier lanes. Someone to go towards a safe lane up against an Abaddon. That's a pretty rough matchup. You can go for a Razor for a good matchup there, but then you'll be kind of screwed up against Storm Spirit because Razor can't do much against the Storm. I could see Marana doing... No, you don't want Marana. Never mind. You don't want Marana up against an Abaddon. That's a bad idea. Hmm. What hero has Disable? I mean, CK, Sven. All these heroes don't really seem all that incredible for the, for the TNC side. Corvenge? Is that at all a possibility? I don't really think it is. No, it's going to be a Tidehunter first for the offlane for the TNC side. That's uh, actually a hero that has some pretty good matchups here. I mean, you're going up against two melee heroes. Storm Spear is very low range, so he's a half a melee hero, let's say. As far as killing off Tidehunter is concerned, it will be really difficult for Fnatic. And Ogre Magi and Shadow Shaman both actually don't do the most damage, especially when there's Anchor Smashes in the area. The TNC, uh, I don't really know how deep they're going to go in, as far as countering the Storm Spirit. I don't even know how deep they have to go, really. If, if they have the Ravage in response to a Storm Spirit zip in, then you could very easily burst him down. Even if a Baden is, for whatever reason, not stunned by that Ravage and able to Photic Shield the Storm Spirit, like, they have so much burst damage, TNC. They might just be able to set up a Death Ball that's going to be impossible for Fnatic to crack. And Fnatic's high ground defense is, is pretty lacking as well. Like, if TNC really do get set up with, like, uh, a, a Terrorblade-type hero and just start sieging onto those structures, like, Fnatic won't really have any answers to that. They have to fight into Martian Machines. That's just a nightmare. And with a third of Ravage, that's even worse. The Lycan will be banned out. Definitely one of the more pushy core heroes that you can pick up. But again, Terrorblade is still in if they really want to push. Luna is still a possibility. Again, all in the efforts of pushing. That's a Razor. Picked up 100% for that matchup up against the Abaddon. Because you could just jolt off the shield, which is very obnoxious. You could jolt off the Bloodlust as well, but mostly the fact that you're just going to link up an Abaddon, and you can't... You get a Photic Shield yourself while you're being linked. It doesn't take off the link, though, which Five is just how Static remaining. Link works. So, yeah, if, if the link is used, the link is going to stick. TNC are going to look to Death Ball. They have very few answers to a Storm Spirit, so this is going to be potentially a game where the Storm Spirit just goes off. But that is, of course, going to come down to the lanes. Uh, again, I'm not really sure what Ogre Magi Shadow Shaman can do outside of these... Uh, Outside of the lane versus Tinker, versus Tidehunter versus Razor, it's really, really hard 
to do anything with these supports. But versus a Tinker, that's where the action is going to be. The problem with that is that Storm Spirit, though he is good against Tinker later on, is not really able to get close to Tinker early on, unless he has a, a quite literal 3v1 up against the Tinker, which shouldn't be happening. 1 for 3 7 Witch Doctor should most of the time be camped out behind the Tinker, or at least nearby enough so that he can cancel a Shackle from the Shadow Shaman. What's it going to be for Fanatic's safe lane? Hmm. Need that EE -E hero. You're going up against a Tidehunter, so you might want to go for a Slark. Doesn't have the best catch up against Tinker. I can definitely see that doing some pretty good work, though. The concern, though, is that uh, even though he has a good matchup against the Tidehunter, is that you have to get really far ahead if you're going to start killing off Tinkers and Razors later on. No, it's going to be the Juggernaut instead. Juggernaut and Slark are two of the better heroes to have versus Tide. Simply because you could kind of ignore the Anchor Smash damage reduction and still do some pretty sizable damage. Obviously, Juggernaut with the spin. Slark can pack off that uh, damage debuff. So, Juggernaut with the Bloodlust. Stormster with the Bloodlust. Hell, even a Baden with the Bloodlust, who for some reason is riding a giant deer. Why? My immersion is all broken. Like, I have no idea what this guy is. Like, is this Keeper of the Light or what? He's using a giant halberd also. Like, what is this cosmetic? He's supposed to use a sword. That's the whole point. That's like, that's his third skill. Like, that's just what he does. That is his job. He has now a halberd, which I guess... Ten seconds. I guess it's just called Curse of Avernus now. It's not called Blade of... It was called Five Blade of Avernus, right? Remaining. In, uh... No, no, it was... What was it called in Dota 1? I don't even remember. I guess it was never sword, it was just blade, and a halberd, I guess, is still a blade, so. It checks out, Ohio. You check out this time. This is going to be a very interesting game, though. Uh, the lanes are going to be very hotly contested, and if Fnatic are able to slow down Cuckoo at all, then Cuckoo is just going to have a miserable game, because Abed's going to be on his ass 24-7. If that doesn't happen, however, then Abed's going to have to overperform, someone's going to have to step up, and actually catch up to and kill off the Tinker. So uh, definitely a little bit of a coin flip game. I could see this game becoming very, very one-sided depending on how the lanes turn out. But uh, yeah, I probably that happens like 30% of the time. Like some team just gets overwhelmingly advantaged in the lanes and they just snowball ahead and just win. So you're looking at, again, like Juggernaut push with Shadow Shaman and Abaddon, like that is, is very easy, just straight win the game, or at least get overwhelming map control when you have these type of heroes. Maybe not win the game up against a Tinker, but I mean, Storm Spirit, if he's going to get farmed, then TNC are very ill-equipped to deal with the Storm Spirit. Like, they will just get massacred by a Storm if they let him get far ahead. So, uh, it's all about that mid lane matchup. I think that's going to be determining who wins this game. Let's see who's going to be playing these other lanes, though. we got Tim's as the Bounty Hunter scouting forward. Sam H is on his tide. Got Cuckoo on that mid lane. Tinker Raven is on the Razor. And 1437 is on the Witch Doctor. On the other end, Eternal Envy v. Tims. The Battle of the Century commences now. Eternal Envy's Juggernaut will unfortunately lose for him, so that kind of sucks. But got DJ supporting as a Shadow Shaman. The classic Shadow Shaman Jug combo is in play here. Pylai Dai is on the Ogre Magi. Abed is on the Storm Spirit in Ohio. Playing that Abaddon on the Deer for whatever reason, because cosmetics don't matter anymore. I don't know. But yeah, this is a pretty classic lane. You can shackle and spin. That will not always kill off a Tidehunter because he's just that bulky. You see Tidehunter's kind of ready for it. Has regeneration and then some. The is somewhat begins. of a threatening lane. The bottom lane though, Ohio Stardust. does know what he's getting into. We see Boots first on this Abaddon. Boots first though, also up on the Razor. Abaddon still is slightly faster than the Razor. But uh, yeah, Static Link should mean that Raven has a pretty clean set of matchups here. I'd imagine it's just going to be a vacuum 1v1 as well. Uh, maybe Bounty Hunter comes in, but 1437 is probably just going to be right here for the entire game, actually. If Cuckoo gets pressured, then just jump in with the cask and try to save him. You don't really need to help out Raven all that much, although Raven's lane is going to be messed with quite a bit. Ohio is going to be doing the uh, shenanigans, let's say, pulling the creep wave off. Razor is actually maybe going to struggle somewhat at killing off these creeps. Yeah, he just doesn't have much base damage. 47 is really, really low for a core, especially. So he's going to have to drag him away from the tower and just try to handle them elsewhere. Still, the lane is probably going to end up drawing relatively evenly. Cuckoo, level 2 already, is going to have March of the Machines. They fortify to keep the wave alive. 
Wow, that is some interesting next level tech here from Fnatic. So Cuckoo is going to have kind of that Marsh Machine is completely wasted. Still, still doing a quite a bit of damage to Pile I Die here, but the backup has left. 1437 and Tim's both moving up towards Eternal Envy's lane. He so far has not skilled up anything. Is going to take a couple of right clicks here. Sentry on the deck, so EE -E is spotted. But Tim's actually uh, is a little bit lagging here. Eternal Envy still doing a lot of damage, though. Has stick charges, has spin. Will be forced out. Sam H going to cut right on through, though. They're still going for this one. They got him! With the right clicks from the Bounty Hunter, thanks to the Orb of Venom. And, of course, that cut through into an Anchor Smash, which still does physical damage through the spin. Eternal Envy is going to take a spill very, very early on. And also uses that spin, which has a very long cooldown this early on in the game. So, yeah, they're actually able to leave the tanker alone in this mid lane. And force everyone, uh, the supports I mean, by everyone I mean the supports, to the top lane. And this is going to be fine for Cuckoo. Like, his lane matchup against Storm Spirit is actually great. Like, Laser shits on Abed really hard. He already showed off March the Machines, so Abed's not really scared for his life necessarily, but... Uh, Abed's going to have a tough time up against this Tinker in a strict 1v1 matchup. Not going to be a 1v1 though, because Tim's the dishonorable bounty hunter is going to cheat and lend his aid in towards killing off Abed. It's going to be really difficult though with the sentry here. Like you can nuke Abed pretty hard, but you can never really get close enough to Janata hit him. Even though Janata isn't even up yet. To lay that uh, slow down onto Abed, like maybe a handful of times, but okay, now it's possible with the sentry being dropped by the Radiant. So Abed's lane just got a lot worse here. Still this bottom lane, Raven. Good matchup here. Nice and clean one up against Ohio, but Ohio actually picking up a couple extra points in Mist Coil. Maybe trying to get a little bit of a uh, easier time CSing while being further away from the wave. Shouldn't really be in that much trouble. Abed the Cuckoo might come to a head here. Tinker is taking a lot of damage. Yeah, he will be able to back off. Has a couple tangos. Has stick charge as well. Abed pushing forward. Doesn't have a lot of mana himself. Fortunately for him, Tim's is not stalking him in the area. Jug no cosmetic lol. Wow, you're right. This is a vanilla juggernaut. Dude, what kind of... What year is this? What year is Eternal Envy playing in? I've never seen a juggernaut with just nothing. I thought he was a pro player, but I guess not. Apparently Envy is not a pro player. That was just a lie. Tim's the Abed. Another battle of century right there. Just trying to poke, just trying to prod, get Cuckoo a clean start. And so far, it has been very clean. Man, this is top lane. <laughs> They're just trying to poke in onto these super buff heroes. Pilot Dive is taking about no damage. Oh, uh, Sam H is taking about no damage. Oh, Cuckoo versus Abed once again. Jeez, these guys are being very aggressive here. But Abed, not the bottle, should have an overwhelming advantage. No such item on Cuckoo just yet. He's just going to resort to the Bibles. The restoratives there. He's actually going to be wrapped around upon. Pilot Die is going to be spotted by the OBS, though. Cuckoo knows exactly what's going on here. Has level 1 missile only. That's not very impressive as a spell. He's been using the lasers to keep Abed back, and now he's out of bottle charges. Tim's tried to snipe the courier. Hit it once. You gotta assume it was shielded and was protected on its way back. And you see Abed forced to make their long trip back. That's kind of rough, man. You need to have that Storm Spirit there just to at least try to mess with that Tinker, trade some hits. Otherwise, dude's going to get fast Soul Ring travels and things get really bad really quickly. Tim's going to make his rotation now towards top lane. Pilot Die still is pretty much invulnerable in this lane. All this armor up against Tidehunter is just going to mean he just will never die. Anchor Smash, keep in mind, does do physical damage, so... It will do about nothing versus the Ogre Magi. DJ has a much worse matchup there. He's going to get beaten a couple times down. Witch Doctor does have a cast, which will bounce if he decides to throw it. It's not going to bounce all that impressively. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that was something. Tim's, though, is still looking for Abed. Oh, Abed, don't get too close to those things. Those things will mess you up. Oh, okay, careful here, Abed. Got rooted. Tim's is in the area to mess with Abed, at least to take off this Claret if he wants to. Abed. Oh, he actually jacked a creep. No, Abed got that last hit. Tim's looking for the second last hit. Oh, he got the big one. Dude, Tim's just split the experience there with Abed and jacked the big creep. That is 
Kind of just a knife in the wound there, just twisting it a little bit. Ohio now is going to get linked up. Could be a Fodic Shield on for a little bit of extra EHP, but he's not level 6. He does deny himself, though. Still, he's off the board, and uh, it's going to be a little bit extra room here for Raven. Picks up a double damage rune, in fact, and you just go right back to the lane and start pushing that in very aggressively. In the meantime, Cuckoo. No one to deal with in mid has travels queued up. There has really not been enough pressure applied to this tinker to, for, for me to comfortably say they've answered this tinker in lane. They've been kind of just leaving him on an island, TNC, and Fnatic have kind of been okay with that. Kind of leaning on Abed's great matchup down the line, but uh, for right now, Highlight Die, Abed. Can be spotted by Tim's, although Tim's will be spotted on the incoming as well. Picked up Tranquil Boots on the Bounty Hunter. Not going to go for Guardian Greaves or anything like that. Maybe it's a little bit of an outdated build. Ohio's ultimate is going to be popped by Raven. Just plasma fields. No link. And Raven is absolutely bullying this Abaddon, as you would expect. It's about the same for uh, a versus Omni Knight matchup. Like, you really don't want to be getting a lot of Aphotic Shield in this matchup because you know it's not really good. You kind of have to. Oh, Tim's. The poke at Abed still a little bit more. Obviously, taking a lot of damage and harassment from Tim's, but he's not really going for a kill here. He's just trying to. Oh, suddenly 147 out of nowhere! With a chair, Abed does have stick charges here, but he's going to get maledicted. He does get the kill, but with Plaza Fields coming out, we'll dr drop in exchange. How the. How the shit did 1437 get in that angle? Like, what? How does... What? <laughs> How? Okay, apparently my map my map awareness is nil, so I'm sorry for that, but... Yeah, they got him. Killing off Abed, even at the cost of some of their own heroes, is 100% worth it. Again, these are not kills in order to, like, get ahead or anything like that. These are just kills to buy space for Cuckoo. And we can call that a success. Just 1437 has been very impressive. As a full 5 support, like, it's been in all the right places. That's really what it takes to be a 5 support. You gotta know where to be and when to be there. Do that, yeah, you got yourself a game. Speaking of a game, they're looking to maybe pressure some Radiant's Razor. Level 4 Shadow Shaman, level 4 Ogre Magi with a half HP Razor. That is a viable kill. 1437 is in the area, but he's not too healthy himself. Abed is here with Ball Lightning. I think he might be able to kill off the Witch Doctor by himself to actually see him. Now Raven caught. Big Ball Lightning in, and that should be a very easy kill, and it will be. Raven to fall, but up towards top lane, Eternal Envy on the run. Sam H. Oh, look at look at this BM from Sam H. They have to kill off his healing ward. I don't really know if they were trying to do that. But uh, Eternal Envy is actually still pretty healthy on this top side. Level 4 only on this tide. Cuckoo. Is gonna show himself off level eight. Internal Envy is on the run, but like he doesn't actually take that much damage from this Tide Hunter. Missiles and Laser will do a little bit more. Sam H still taunting. Laser is there with the Omni Slash. Will bounce through between two, but Internal Envy now gonna try to be out. That's not gonna happen, bro. Tim takes a lot of damage, but he will be able to get out of there. And EE waited a very long time to actually spin TP out there. I guess he expected his Omni Slash to do a little more damage. Pilot Dino caught in this bottom lane trying to dive one for three seven. Raven is there. He will put a quick end to that dive, even pushing forward, looking for DJ, perhaps. No, he's just gonna fall back. 1437 gets to survive. They do take down EE -E and Pi all around the map. Sam H with these taunts, dude. Every single time. Still not at that Ravage mark just yet. He's having a slightly worse time than the Abad in levels 5 versus level 8. Definitely a, a pretty big mismatch there, but that's just because everyone's been like fighting over here in the lane where the creep wave has been over here. Oh, courier. Oh, early shield. Tim's. Oh no, they know they know that something's going on here. What the hell is this ugly courier? This oh god. He's gonna be fine though. Saw it coming. Tidehunter should be picking up level 6 soon. You can definitely make a little bit of a play here on top, since they do have the travels on the Tinker. Speaking of, he's traveling in. Straight in towards Eternal MV and DJ does not get hit with the Hex nor Shackle. Tim's going to arrive now onto DJ. Very soft hero, very easy kill. Eternal MV with the Healing Ward should be fine to just chill in the background. Sam H 
gonna look to root him out. Cuckoo gonna drop some marches. Healing Ward still doing his job. Tim's gonna close in towards Eternal Envy. Has a spin and a TP if he needs it. And the bottom side, in the meantime, Raven caught in a corner will drop. Back up coming in from Cuckoo. He's gotta be a little bit careful here. Marching Machines does a lot of damage, but it does it very slowly, so we'll be able to get in safely at least. Does cost them Raven again, this Razor. The victim of a couple of consecutive ganks. Not fun times for him. Still on top of the net worth chart, but that just means he's giving more farm. More gold over to Fnatic with every death. The Tinker, though, is going to be in full effect. It is officially a Tinker game. Abed, going to go for Bloodstone first, no Kaya first. Just trying to answer that Tinker and still Eternal Envy. Not having a very clean time up on top. So does see Tim's, of course, and everyone and their mom going to start teleporting in. Of course, uh, one person's mom's going to cancel. I don't know whose mom Cuckoo is in this case, but uh, yeah, that kind of fell apart now, didn't it? Ohio is here. He's going to try to pressure back Sam Age. Lots of damage with that aquatic shield burst, and of course that miscoil. Eternal Envy and forced to spin TP all the way back to the base. Still, it's a lot of damage here for Raven. We'll probably be able to put the finishing touches on this tower, and yeah, this tower is not long for this world. Abed, DJ, looking to dive, 1 for 3, 7. Short ball lightning in, they have vision of him. Should be a pretty clean kill, as it will be. DJ's gonna drop the surf from Ords, tower fortified, but probably is gonna fall here. Cuckoo cannot really get close enough, otherwise Pilot Dive is just gonna jack him up. Missiles, that's a low level missile, that was only level 1. That did about no damage. Tim's gonna give them full vision here. Part of the reason right now why Bounty Hunter Tinker is so obnoxious. He doesn't even have track yet. Yeah, never mind, he does have track. Tower is actually going to be defended. Still Raven pushing in this top lane. Putting himself at a quite significant amount of risk here. If Fnatic do teleport in, they can get a pretty easy surround by TPing to the shrine. But it's feeling pretty comfortable. And if it does come to a point where Ray's going to get ganked, he has the option of getting help from the Tinker if it looks close. Otherwise, he has the hood, so it's going to take him a long time to actually die. March, march, march. TNC looking for another structure. They're starting to pull ahead just in the farm department. Ohio's going to push in now into a lot of heroes, though. He does have borrowed time, gets gushed, and tracked. We'll be able to buff that one out. They're just looking to drain damage from him, so he's actually hitting damage for literal zero damage. Eternal Envy in the back line is going to try to run out with the spin. What are you doing, bro? What? What's up, sir? That was the worst question mark I've ever made. Okay, maybe that one's better. So, uh, turns out, if you guys didn't know, Static Link gives Razor damage, and Spin keeps you safe versus magical damage. And Razor's right clicks are not magical damage, even though they look like they might be because it's lightning. Mm-mm, that's not how this game works. That is a different game you're thinking of. So, there goes the tower. Eternal Envy, I, I don't really know what the plan was there, but that was not the plan. Like, that was certainly not how the plan was supposed to go, so they'll take down the tower very easily. And again, this is all just space creation measures for Cuckoo here. Blink Dagger right around the corner, Abed. He is getting closer and closer to a point where he is able to answer the Tinker. The problem is that, yeah, Tinker is a problem, but so is this Razor. Like, they have to answer the rest of the TMC Death Blob. And I'm not really sure if Fnatic are quite yet at that position. Like, can they actually deal with this? I'm not sure they can. Ohio's not going to die to this immediately. They'll have to invest quite a bit of time simply because he has borrowed time. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he can't really do anything to stop this. He can use Mist Coil to pull the wave. Seems like that got it. But that's about it. Like, Sam H can tank pretty easily. Even Raven can tank. Has the regen from the hood. There is also that Voodoo Restoration in the background, and they will catch up to Ohio now. Track immediately going to get buffed out, but the Static Link will drain quite a bit of damage here. Helping them push a little bit faster. In the meantime, like, you would expect some split push elsewhere, but Cuckoo is all over that split push. He's gotta be careful though, the trap has been set. Where is this Tinker going to land? Nowhere actually, he's gonna go back home. They're still pushing, so in this meantime, when Fnatic are very patiently waiting for Tinkers, they are just losing structures. Pilot Eye's like, screw it, I'm going in, boys. Is that the Tinker? I can't tell. That is Cuckoo, he's stuck in the trees. March, march, march. Abed, he's gonna try to go in for it. He's gonna find Cuckoo, but Sam H is here with the Ravage. Will deploy it, which will land onto the Storms. They're just on the tip. And DJ as well, in the march still, will drop. Serpent Wards 
are going to be committed as well. Cuckoo gets out alive. The tower is going to be taken down. All towers defended by TNC. That is a 100% convincing win for the Radiant side. Tim's even going in, scouting further. Man, I mean, as a Storm Spirit, it's kind of your job to kill off Tinker, but not when you're at less than half HP when the fight starts. Like, if he is able to drop a single march, you're in a lot of trouble. And that Ravage, man, just on the last spike. Like, I don't think the Ravage would have gone any further than that. Ohio, of course, the drum out to get away from that Static Link. Missiles, now level 3, actually start to do some damage. And if you're tracked, you will always hit with the missiles. Even they found DJ. Cuckoo's gonna dive in really deep. Maybe not deep enough to actually do anything. He's gonna get hexed up, but in the march means DJ cannot stick around here. The creep wave is gonna get obliterated, and so will this tower. Backup is coming in, though. There's no Ravage here for TNC, so they're sticking around very boldly in this area. 1437 has the cask, and there's no creep support here for Fnatic, so the cask will just destroy them. Raven on the front line with the hood is gonna be the target focus. Ball in from Abed will find Cuckoo, who's on the front line, gets hexed up as well. Cask is trying to bounce through. Cuckoo's still alive right now. He's gonna get a couple sets of marches as well as a laser off. But that's about it. He's going to go down. Eternal Envy is taking quite a bit of damage here. They get the Shackle onto the Raven Razor. But in the march, they will just grind down all these supports, including Ohio's Abaddon, who will be end up denying himself Abed Gush. But he will be able to, I think, dodge it. And Ball ending a very far distance away. Death Ward will do some damage. The missiles as well. Abed has no mana to dodge it. And they'll take down the Storm. The Tinker was forced to buy back for that fight. But I think in the end is worth it because he can apply so much pressure to all these lanes protect this push ravage what's the cooldown looking like 35 seconds left raven's looking really damn healthy as well you cannot walk into this march uh, you get spin into this march but we've seen what happens before when eternal envy decides to do that so this tower is just going to be bulldozed you know before i said like about a 30 percent chance of this game being very one-sided Looks like we rolled that 30% because this is looking like this game might just be over soon. Tier 3 tower is going to go down. I don't know if they can stick around for Rax. If they had Ravage, they, they kind of do have Ravage. I think they have Rax in the bag now. Like, Fnatic can't get close here. The Storm Spirit's going to be arriving soon. Probably teleporting to the Shrine? No, teleporting in towards mid. They take down the tower and now the Shrines are actually going to start to fall. With the Ravage as backup and a pipe right around the corner. Oh, they're going to smoke up and return to this fight. EE -E in the precarious position right now, but so is Pi and Ohio. Cast gonna bounce through onto both of them. I think they both didn't get maledicted. No, 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 Ohio did. He doesn't have borrowed time and he's gonna need some. Too late now, he's dead. Missile one onto Pi Lai Die. Missile two and laser, you're dead, son. Ball in, in towards Cuckoo. They pull him out. Cast gonna start bouncing through, but no, actually the spin is gonna prevent that. Cuckoo gonna try to get out of here with the rearm. Ravage from long range is gonna give him some cover, but he does go down, but at the huge cost of Fnatic. They lose absolutely everybody, and Raven is able to clean up a lot of those kills, crashing in really hard with that Ravage backup. Yes, they kill off the tanker, yes, he's down for a minute, but the racks will fall. And for TNC, that is a pretty large win. Ogre, Abaddon cannot hold this, it is simply too late. Oh, that is not a pipe, that was a Helm of the Dominator, actually, I did not see that one coming. Hell, yeah, you get a little bit of extra stun action. Centaur is not the best here. Doesn't matter. I mean, Rack's taken pre-20 minutes. 100% completely worth it. I'm sure there's been a lot of track kills as well. Haven't really been keeping track of that. But uh, for sure, there's a lot of gold floating around for the TNC side. 20 minutes in, 15k lead is a disgusting advantage this early on. Absolutely insane. The fact that they have a tanker who can get even more gold much, much faster... And of course, that bounty hunter who's going to be working on that vessel, in fact, uh, has it whenever the courier gets out here. Yeah, they're loaded, and Fnatic really can't get into these fights. Storm Spirit going for Bloodstone first would be nice if he had it. Would really be nice. But unfortunately, if he does ball lightning in, he's going to take a lot of damage. There's really no way around that, because you're going to be ball lightning, using ball lightning in towards marching machines. Smoke is going to be popped by everyone. Looks like Raven kind of missed them. It's like everyone missed everyone, actually. They just walked right by. Cuckoo's got to be careful, though. He is going to have that Blink Dagger backed up. Blink. We'll keep him safe, but the OBS is here. The smoke is going to be dropped on Internal Envy. 
And now he's tracked out, which means missiles are going to start to fly. He can spin it off. The Centaur Stomp is going to be dodged. Pretty well played, but still the missiles are flying absolutely every which way. Pylai Dai is going to be consumed immediately. They do dive in towards the Tinker. Lightning is, a uh, laser is there onto Abed, keeping Cuckoo alive. And in fact, with the Glimmer, he will survive and get out of here. Abed, Shuriken, oof, almost casted. In the meantime, though, Raven chasing down Ohio has not much damage stolen. Eye of the Storm is still ticking away. Minus armor here on the Abaddon gets maimed as well, but should be able to survive. Big thing is, though, not the kills on the supports for TNC. It's the fact that Cuckoo is able to get out of there. Still, bottom lane is pushing. Top lane has some momentum as well. The biggest asset, though, is the fact that Sam H did not use the Ravage. They are able to, once again, get in trend. Omni Slash. Oh, Eternal Envy. Oh, no, son. No, not like this. Eternal Envy is going to spin, drum away as fast as possible. Does survive, but Omni Slash is down. Did about no damage. Now the missiles are once again going to start to fly in thanks to that track vision. Missiles are going to just destroy everyone. Healing Ward is going to help quite a bit against this, but how do you get close to this? Abed has got to YOLO into Cuckoo, I think. And that's probably the only thing that's going to actually get them anything. If they do try to YOLO in, got to watch out for that Ravage. So if more are deployed, Cuckoo is off this fight for right now. He can very easily teleport in, but the creep wave is a little bit lagging. Healing Ward sticking alive for its duration. Abed trying to farm, scrape together that bloodstone elsewhere. They can take out the shrine. And they'll do just that. Easy gold here. Oh my god, this guy has a full sheep stick. Nope, wait, no, no, that's no, it's not. My mic was blocking it. I like saw it, I'm like, oh no, that's a full sheep stick. No, he doesn't. That's not quick buy, that's the inventory. It's these stupid these things, these bugs things, which are just messing with my mind. Whenever I see the quick buy now, it's like Ugh. So yeah, this makes a little more sense. He doesn't have a sheep stick. He's gonna go for a Dagon instead. Has a little baby Dagon right now. Cuckoo's just gonna blink on in, man. He doesn't give a shit. Ohio's borrowed time is immediately gonna get popped. That's not the longest cooldown in the world, but he needs it 100% if he's gonna actually fight here. I don't think there's any way for them to actually get in. There's a pipe on Sam H at this point. Rax are just gonna be easily taken. There was no fight there. They just walked in, took Rax. It's a 23k lead now. Tinker... Yeah, this is... Is this game just over? Like, Fnatic can't get close to this. They have to YOLO in. Like, there's no other option here. But if they do, they're immediately gonna get Ravaged. And Cuckoo, if he is gonna get jumped on by, uh, by Abed, Sam H's barrier from the pipe should prevent a lot of that damage. Alpha Wolf gonna give Tinker a means to get in. Now here comes the push in towards the Tide Hunter. He's gonna crack and shell it. Does have the Ravage still available, but he will go down without it. Wow, takes a lot of damage here. In the Martian Machines, they're gonna try to hunt for the Tinker, but Abba doesn't have enough mana to actually kill off the Tinker, so he's got to run. Missile's gonna fly in. Kill off Eternal Envy more than likely. And DJ Ohio in a precarious position will be dropped. The Shuriken bounces through. Get them all the kills in the world. Today's Dota, guys, has been so freaking underwhelming. Like, seriously? This is the second best of three of the day. TNC versus Fnatic, and it's like, wow, TNC Fnatic should be a great set. This was not, this is not a great match. We've definitely seen Fnatic play a lot better. Something was not clicking in the Fnatic camp. I don't know what it was, but uh, it just seemed like everything was bad. It felt like someone else should have been camping in the mid lane with Abed. Uh, it felt like Eternal Envy got way too punished for what his lane was. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the Storm Spirit didn't really ha even have that many answers, but TNC just got in so quickly. Mostly, I think, because Cuckoo had such a clean time. Like, there was very rarely any pressure on Cuckoo in this game. Like, never. Like, he was completely fine in lane the entire time. So, if you voluntarily give Tinker free farm, you're probably going to end up regretting that decision. So... It is going to be TNC. Wow, 5-1, 12, 1, 4, 3, 7 again. Dude, <laughs> Witch Doctor in all the right places. TNC will just destroy Fnatic. Second best of three. Second game two that ends in just 20 minutes. One-sided stomp fest. Not fun for anyone, especially not for Fnatic. They are now out of SLI 4. And, uh, well, that's going to mean that TNC are sitting in the finals awaiting either uh, ABG, Mineski, or Geek Fam. Those games will be played in two days on the 11th of January. For right now, we are done, guys. I'm going to take a quick look at whether or not the second Star Ladder channel on the uh, CN qualifiers is still being played. 
and it looks like it is not. Man, those games are even faster than mine. We are efficient today, guys. Like, everyone, every single game has been 2-0, done. Uh, but guys, that means we are done for the day. There should be more Dota coming up soon on some other channels, I would imagine, for some other tournaments, so you're going to have to go and find that out yourself. But if you guys enjoyed the casting, be sure to tune back in on the 11th, same time. It's going to be 9, p uh, 9 a.m. CET, or uh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do your time conversions for you guys can figure that out. If you guys enjoyed the casting, you can tune back in. Then I'll be casting those games as well because X God is slacking for some reason. If you guys enjoyed the casting, you could also follow me on Twitter at Mike Loris or Facebook if you prefer Mike Loris Gaming. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Congratulations to TNC. GG.